Hi everyone, Dr. Bear here, and I just want to give you a quick word of encouragement on the fact that you can learn hard things and give you some suggestions on how you can help yourself. I've titled this slide, You Can Learn Blank, because you can insert for yourself whatever blank you want there. I'm a professor at an institution here in the United States. I teach engineering, and so I am always involved in learning. I'm teaching myself hard things, and I'm trying to teach undergraduates and graduate students hard things, and I'm trying to teach graduate students how to teach themselves hard things. So I have some good news for you, and it is in fact that you can learn blank. There's a great concept called neuroplasticity, and it's the idea that our brains can change through growth and reorganization. This happens to us all the time. In fact, you can probably think of some skills that you developed through neuroplasticity. The idea here is that when we practice a skill, maybe it's a physical skill like swinging a baseball bat or throwing a football, we do this over and over. We fire our neurons in a certain sequence. And as we repeat this sequence, that firing, that triggering of these neurons becomes more natural. It actually becomes quicker and more efficient. And that's where muscle memory comes from. Think back to some skill that you've gotten pretty good at, you can say, oh, I could do that in my sleep, or I could do it with my eyes closed. Well, you've got muscle memory, you've trained your neurons to fire in these certain patterns, and that skill is ingrained in you now. And it's not just physical skills, it's also thought patterns. It's analyzing a problem or recognizing this pattern in somebody's speech, and you can see it in other speeches and in other arguments. So it's thoughts, it's problem solving, Anything having to do with thinking, you can apply this neuroplasticity and you can get better. So to develop these neural pathways, it requires lots of repetition. That's how we train our brains. And in order to get the repetition, we need reward. Maybe we have positive reinforcement. Someone tells us, hey, you're pretty good for a beginner. So then I think, oh yeah, it's worthwhile for me to practice. And then when I do that, I get the repetition and the repetition gets me these neural pathways and I become really good at it. Another external motivator is pleasure. Maybe no one's telling me I'm good at it, but I enjoy doing X. So I'm gonna repeat doing X and after a while I get good at it. Those are what we would call external motivations, external rewards because something from outside, it motivates us to move on. But maybe you don't have someone telling you you're great or it's not fun to practice. And sometimes that's the case. But we can motivate ourselves still if we have in our mind that, you know, I'm not really all that great at X right now. And it's no fun to practice X. But the reward for mastering X is that then I can do Y. And when I do Y, it'll be glorious. So I have this internal motivation now, and it gets me over the hump so I can repeat, I can practice, I can get those neural pathways, and I can become fluent. And after a while, maybe it becomes pleasurable for me. That thing that wasn't pleasurable, it becomes pleasurable, and now I have external motivation that I didn't have before. One thing I'll say is when working with children, right, you're trying to teach them A, B, C, one, two, three, they have no concept of why that is important or why it's worthwhile. So they'll never have the internal motivation, but you can give them external motivation. You know, when they figure out A and B and C, you can cheer wildly, you can make it exciting for them to master these simple skills that they have no idea why they're learning them and you can make it pleasurable for them. So if you're a parent or if you're a teacher for young ones, that's what you wanna do, you wanna make it wildly exciting and engaging. But as adults, we tend to like to know, why is this valuable? Why am I learning it? Then it makes us, it motivates us internally, and then we go after it with our whole heart. So that's really what I wanted to say here is that, you know, if you can figure out how to re reward yourself properly, you can new learn new skills and you can improve weaknesses. You can probably come up with your own examples, but let me just give you a couple examples. For me, I once tried to learn guitar. However, I did not like the way it made my fingers feel. Because of that, I didn't feel it was worth my time and my effort to repeat it. So I didn't continue and get that repetition, and I didn't become good at guitar. Later, I picked up martial arts, a style of kung fu. 
I've always been fascinated by martial arts. At the beginning, I got positive reinforcement. You know, teachers said, hey, you're pretty good for a beginner. I enjoyed it. It helped me stay in shape. So I had reward, and so I continued to do it. I got really good at it, and I got my black belt in two years, where I knew people who took four or six years or longer. That just goes to show you how this reward thing is really important. One more thing to bring up is that I sometimes hear students say, well, I'm just not good at math. And you know what comes up in my mind? I think, okay, maybe you're right, but what if you could be better at X than you realize? What if when you were learning this earlier, you didn't get the positive reinforcement you needed or the pleasure from it that you needed to repeat, repeat, repeat and get the neural pathways so that you became good at it. Maybe that's why you're not good at it. Maybe it's not, you know, something that's fixed or certain or set about you. Maybe you can change. So what if you can become good at X through practice? Who knows what that will unlock for you? So it really comes down to figuring out how to motivate yourself. Is the skill that you want to learn valuable enough to you that you're going to keep practicing even if it's no fun? You know, you don't have to be a world-class expert to be good at something, but you can still be pretty darn good. Anyway, I'll just leave you with this thought. I hope I've encouraged you that you can learn whatever you want to learn, if you want it bad enough.